Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and if you're just tuning in, uh, all this information is coming from my book blog, professionalpapervision.wordpress.com, and what we're talking about today is slicing images in 3D and adding interactivity. Now, the one thing I just hate about slicing images, certainly in Photoshop, GIMP, or Illustrator, is slicing them. So there's got to be a way to do it programmatically, and what I show you how to do in this particular blog post is to slice these images programmatically and then to add interactivity. Let's come on down here and let's take a look at the demo. We've been working on a basically a map for a Walton County. We're doing a little uh, historic tour and we actually slice these images programmatically and uh, let's take a look at the demo. So here's the demo right here and basically these images have been sliced. Now it's a huge map and so you're only seeing a portion of it here in the screen so make sure you go to the blog and, and view it and if you click on one of the panels here you just click and flip up and uh, then it will actually ease down so I'm actually using tween light to do this with and uh, you can also grab and drag them and I use a utilities class I created to do that with as well so you just flip some of these panels here there you go and unfortunately you can't see all of it here but once again just go to the post and you'll be able to take a look at everything and what I'm doing actually now is actually spinning the entire thing in space so all these panels have been sliced. It's just one image map I brought in. I sliced it and then I, uh, using the bitmap data object, and then I uh, basically put it in uh, Flash Player 10, and uh, you get all this wonderful behavior here. And once again, you can grab and move those around. I'm on the other side of the program as well right now. So, what I'm going to do now, we're going to go back to the blog post and we'll talk a little bit about how this was made. Okay, we're back on the book's blog, and let's scroll down here and talk about some of the topics. Of course, you have the demo here that we've seen already, and there's a source, and then the discussion and the YouTube, which we're doing now. Just real quick here, this was built using the Flash 10 player. I built it in Gumbo, and I created it as an ActionScript project. Now, there's three important topics to discuss in this blog post, and that's slicing an image, polymorphism and encapsulation, and stagnant properties, methods, and interactivity. We'll go through those one by one. Slicing the image actually was fairly easy. You've got your iteration through your X and Y coordinates and you want to create a new map piece using bitmap and then you essentially use copy pixels to grab the piece that you want from that. Then you create a new sprite and add the bitmap data to it and then here's the most important piece right here. We're using polymorphism. We're actually going to grab that bitmap piece and transfer it into a subclass that we created called map piece and that enables us to do a huge amount of things like um, basically add properties to it without actually using an object as is done in other text. Now if you take a look at um, Gary Rosenberg's book uh, Action Script 3 Game Programming University which is a great book I uh, certainly suggest that you purchase it uh, he does a similar slicing technique but in ours we actually add polymorphism and encapsulation where he doesn't have that okay let's talk a little bit about what the heck is polymorphism that's a big word but really you know you're used to writing functions and transferring variables in those functions but what polymorphism buys you is a data typing the ability to not just transfer variables but also objects and so actually we're actually transferring in a sense this sprite to our map class and actually adding properties to it through that uh, it's really powerful and I like to think of it as the king's kid so if the king is allowed in the throne room then the king's kid which is inherited from the king in a sense is or inherits all the king's properties uh, is allowed in the throne room as well so kind of a simple ideological <laughs> way of looking at it but there you go uh, this showing you the map piece class that was created here using uh, uh, polymorphism to transfer the uh, the actual sprite to it. Interactivity is accomplished in two ways, by a listener and by creating a static properties and methods class. Uh, the listener, of course, you've seen these before. We just add listener with a mouse click to every map piece as it's created. And so when you roll over it, you can see you can click on it and things happen. For example, this click map piece function is run. Finally, this is the coolest thing. This is static properties and methods. I created a new class called drag drop static and I don't instantiate it. I actually use it directly. So that's the cool thing about it and uh, pretty much it just has all the drag drop functions in it using a mouse listener. So what happens here is I simply call it by drag drop static dot drop piece which is one of the functions in that static method and just throw the map piece in there and suddenly I have drag drop for whatever I use and this is extremely powerful because it's reusable. So I actually just use this class for anything and whenever I need a drag drop I just throw the piece that I want to drag drop right into the function right there and it does it. Isn't that fantastic? So pay attention to that. We'll be covering that in more detail in the book 
and you'll certainly see a lot more uh, code in this blog using that technique. Hey, let's take a look at the demo one more time. It's just so cool. So once again, you can see you're slicing it up using that bitmap data copy pixels piece. You're taking that those pixels and you're throwing them through polymorphism into a subclass called map piece. Then what you're doing is you have interactivity. So when you click on that, you get a flip using tween light. Okay. And there are tweening uh, classes in Flash, but tween light is what it is, light. And it's really super easy to use. We'll cover a post on it later and show you how to easily incorporate tween light. And you can see these actually are descending down as they uh, after they're clicked. And finally, using the utilities uh, class, the uh, static methods class, you have your drag and drop. Isn't that cool? Hey, there we go. Drag and drop. Oh, and this is so easy. So go ahead and download the code, play around with it. And if you have any questions, make sure you post a question on the blog. Thanks. This is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University. Thank <laughs> you.